So now that China has delivered in the footsteps of Europe, does the U.S. go it alone? Let's talk to Richard Yetsanga of ANZ joining us right here in Singapore, not Hi. away from Sydney. Very nice to see you. Thank you. So what do you think? Um, do, does the Fed, is it, is it going to become a situation uh, of the Fed versus the rest of the world? Look, I think it already is that situation. I think, it, look, if you went back and look at everyone's kind of year ahead expectations this year, one of the strongest views by I think almost anybody would kind of be the supremacy or the the strength of the US economy um, with the idea that interest rate differentials would widen because mm. the Fed would hike. Now we've had a move in interest rate differentials but because everyone else has cut. So in a sense I think the Fed is already going it alone. I don't know that the big question now is whether or not they hike because even if they hike it's hard to see them hiking right. very much. You still have this very divergent policy setting in place and it's un that's unlikely to shift for well for a while at least. Yeah, but in this uh, negative yield environment, uh, one can only imagine whether the Fed will actually hike because people are already uh, pushing back their expectations on the Fed's first rate hike. Look, I think since 2013, markets have been telling you that a Fed rate hike is a difficult kind of thing to really see. Um, in 2013, we had both a strong dollar and higher US bond yields and emerging markets, of course, went off kilter a bit, I think probably to to use the downbeat version. Um, and ever since then, I think, you know, we've kind of been inching away from this idea that the Fed can have a normal monetary policy cycle. So look, maybe we get one hike or two hikes or something very modest, but certainly it's hard to see a sustained series of rate moves in the US given how weak the global economy looks. Yeah, and Steve and I were just talking about how Australia, Asia uh, could somehow provide that shield, that shelter for investors ducking for cover. Australia has certainly seen that, the wall of money coming in this week. How Look, do you interpret uh, interpret? I, I think we've yeah. seen that obviously across Asia, in fact, in pockets of emerging markets, but for investors, it has become much more selective. I mean, um, Malaysia, for instance, has a, has a much more difficult time of it than yeah. India has perhaps recently, and part of that is the different way that oil impacts those two economies. But I think that again highlights that we're in a much more selective investment environment, um, and it's not just a matter of buying yield anymore, because it's mattered a lot which markets you've been in and which exchange rates you've been exposed to. Do you think that there's um, any likelihood that we'll get a repeat of the so-called taper tantrum? I think the taper tantrums were a very broad-based adjustment in an asset class because the asset class was not prepared for the change in the Fed and even if people had talked about the change in the Fed I don't think people understood what it would mean. Mm. So I think no, I think we're in a very different environment now because already investors have become much more selective. I mentioned Malaysia, um, Russia obviously has um, investment has already been leaving Russia. Brazil hasn't been doing as well. In fact, Latin America generally hasn't been doing as well. So I think no. Um, now, that's also one reason why the Fed shouldn't hike on a uh, sustained basis. If the Fed were to ignore global developments and simply focus on the, st the economic strength of the US economy, I think we absolutely risk a rerun of that. So therefore any likely increase out of the Fed this year, probably relatively small, it's relatively modest, yeah. modest and I think probably only to show that they can rather than because they need to? Look, to certainly, if the Fed has an activity objective, an inflation objective, and a financial stability kind of objective, you can argue they're meeting their activity objective. Headline inflation is going to be close to zero, and even core inflation looks like it's rolling over. And it's hard to argue there's financial stability concerns, I think, in the sense that credit spreads now are much wider than they were two years ago, um, et cetera, et cetera. So, if any Fed moves, it's hard to have any other view other than they're going to be very, very modest for the near term. China easing, do you think they have further distance to go? Oh, unambiguously, they have, they have further distance to go. I mean, I think there's a couple of forces here. One is the external force of the US dollar being a bit stronger. And let's remember China accumulated all its foreign reserves primarily during a very weak US dollar environment where it received a lot of foreign capital. Now the tide's going out on the US dollar, so that balance has shifted. And also, obviously, because China's going through a domestic deleveraging cycle. And mm. part of that is the corporate sector needing to manage the currency risk around their circa $900 billion in external debt. So both of those things mean you probably get some continued foreign exchange intervention from the central bank, and that tightens domestic liquidity. So reserve requirement ratios coming down, and probably interest rates are coming down a bit more too.